Hello, family. One of my favorite images uh, in the Bible we find in a story in 2 Kings chapter 6. And it's a story about Elisha, um, the prophet uh, of Israel at that time. And what's happening, as is true in a lot of Israel's history, there is an army that's uh, fighting against it. And this time, uh, it's, the, it's the king of Aram. Now, Aram is the area that uh, we would call Syria today, uh, but they were Aram. And the king was fighting against Israel. And so at one point, he starts uh, making various battle plans. And he's like, I'll send my army here, I'll send my army there. But wherever he says he's going to send his army, it seems like Israel's one step ahead of him. And what the army thinks they're going to find there, uh, Israel has already moved or, or gone someplace different. They're always a step ahead. So the king wants to know, obviously there's a spy in our midst. Who is telling uh, the king of Israel what we're doing? And so all of his military people are like, you know, it's, it's none of us. He said, but uh, they've got this prophet over there. They've got Elisha, and Elisha knows this stuff. Elisha, uh, the words that are used there, um, Elisha knows the very words you say in your bedroom. So uh, when nobody else could possibly hear the king of Aram, whatever it is he's saying, Elisha still knows it because God's talking to him. So the king then says, fine, we got to go get rid of Elisha. So he sends an entire army out to take one guy just to get Elisha. They get word that he's in a place called Dothan. And so Dothan uh, in Israel is on the north end of the sea. It's just a little bit north of uh, Shechem. And it's in a bit of a valley, right? And there's hills that kind of surround most parts, uh, surround Dothan. So what the king of Aram does, he sends that army down there. And they, one, uh, one night, they completely circle all of Dothan. And the idea is they're going to lay siege to it. They're going to finally get Elisha out of there and get him out of the picture. Next morning, Elisha's servant wakes up, young boy. He wakes up and he sees these armies. He sees that they're completely surrounded. And that's obviously, that's bad news. So he goes and he wakes up Elisha and he's all beside himself. He's like, what are we going to do? The army's completely surrounding us. They're going to take us. And Elisha doesn't appear to bat an eye, doesn't appear to panic. Um, he simply says, uh, in the, the biggest, one of the biggest understatements in the entire Bible, he says, there's more of us than there are of them. The servant still doesn't get it. So Elisha prays to God. He says, please open his eyes so that he can see. Open his eyes so he can see. Now, from the servant's from Elisha's servant, from his point of view, he sees all he needs to see. He sees that their entire city, all of Dothan, is completely surrounded by this army of Aram coming to get Elisha. He sees all he thinks he needs to see. And yet Elisha's prayer is, open his eyes so that he can see. And then what does he see? God answers the prayer. What does the servant see? It says, all around the hills are these chariots of fire and these horses that are in the air, all around the hills, these, these, this angel army. And that's, that's when it makes sense. There are more of them, or more of us, than there are of them. So there's enough of the enemy that he can see with his own eyes, with his own physical eyes, there's enough to circle the city. But now he sees beyond the physical. He sees that spiritual force that God grants him the vision to see. And they are in the hills, encircling that army. And so that's how it is. Now, it goes on, the story goes on, and um, Elisha didn't even need to use that army. I suppose if, they, if God wanted to, he could have taken that angel army and completely wiped out the army of Aram. But instead, Elisha goes out and says, well, who is it you're looking for? And, oh, no, no, this isn't even where you know to be. Follow me. I'll take you there. And so he takes this blind army, marches them right into the middle of Samaria, asks God to open their eyes. They're not blind anymore, and now they realize they're trapped. 
instead of killing them all, which the king of Israel said, hey, maybe we ought to kill them all, Elisha's like, no, they're prisoners of war, let's feed them and let's treat them well. But that's beyond the story. Think about that boy, that servant. He could see something. He could see the enemy. But what he couldn't see was so much greater than that. That force of heavenly angels, God's own army, that was so much greater than the enemy that faced him. You know, we're in a weird time right now in this country and in the world, really, where you have an entire nation that is scared of what we can't see. This virus that it could be anywhere, we don't know. And that scares us. But just as Elisha could see beyond, and he was actually comforted by what those around him couldn't see, he was comforted by the spiritual because he knew that God was greater than any force that could come to bear on him. That same God that protected Elisha, that's the same God that's in control today. It's no different. So as we continue forward in these days or weeks, months, however long it, this continues, there's no need to be afraid of what we can't see. Because what we can't see, the grace of God, the power of God, is so much greater than any enemy we could face. Have a good day.